Now, both inter and intra trade are dependent on seamless logistics operations. Africa is looking to boost its intra trade by 28% by 2030. And while the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement should help facilitate this, logistic remains a challenge. Consulting firm Frost & Sullivan suggests that multi-channel logistics solutions may be the answer for more seamless trade as far as the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement is concerned. Nomvoka Solo, African consul Africa consultant rather at Frost & Sullivan, joins us with more insights. Nomvoka, good afternoon. Thank you so much for being with us today. So, I mean, maybe we can start, Nomvo, by maybe recapping on the dream here. You know, the dream by 2030, uh, we've got a goal in terms of Africa a trade. Talk to us about this, um, you know, and maybe some of the challenges that we uh, could anticipate on the way there. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Um, so currently, if you look at where we are, and then let's look at the dream. First, we need to take a track back and look at where we are currently. So the African continent has, you know, been aiming to boost its intertrade uh, between itself. You know, um, currently sitting at around fourteen point four percent when you look at the exports. And I mean, if you think about Africa, we are endowed with resources. You know, with mineral resources. Yet, you know, our intra-trade with ourselves currently is at 14.4%. Uh, so with the introduction of the African Trade uh, um, Continental Agreement in, it is in, in 2018, of course, and then being re rectified in 2019, and then finally coming into, you know, um, activity in 2021, the goal is that we would increase our intra-trade up until, you know, 28% by 2030. However, you know, we are still on the back track in terms of that because of the lack of infrastructure currently, you know, the lack of, you know, business opportunities, you know, SME, SMMEs being able to really achieve a seamless flow because of the challenges within, I think, the overall transportation infrastructure and then a high reliance on only one mode of transportation, such that when supply chain um, disruptions actually occur, which we saw in the last two years, it then impacts overall, I think, the, the progress that we could have made. Um, and now that also affects the, the, the guy in the street trying to sell the things as well, and even, you know, um, receive them through imports, yeah. So, I mean, today we are speaking about multi-channel logistics. Now, I think it would be interesting just to find out about this as, as a solution, as one of the solutions, um, you know, that could possibly boost intra-Africa trade. Um, talk to us about this, Nombo, and maybe we can also uh, touch on the issue of infrastructure, because I think this could be uh, possibly be the biggest challenge that we face in trying to, uh, you know, use this one uh, way of achieving intra-Africa trade. Yeah, definitely. So then, um, no, 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 I think what we need to look at when we look at multi-channel logistics solutions is that you're moving away from having a reliance on one mode of transportation, right? If you're just looking at the logistics part of things. So say now with the, the last two years, which was the disruptions in, in say, uh, the Suez Canal uh, shipment, is that most of the confinements were supposed to come through the, the, the sea freight, right? However, you know, those blockages, that blockage in 2021 really affected a lot of businesses you know, on the African continent, but also globally. Um, Africa itself, you know, is a bit on the, uh, on the back leg in terms of our transportation infrastructure, yet we trade most of our goods, you know, within the continent on transportation. So therefore, if we really address first the infrastructure part of things, which is also detailed actually in the African um, in the AFCFTA, you know, that infrastructure needs to be addressed. So then if we look at not just road transportation, but also rail transportation, looking at how can we improve even the air, the air uh, freight space, um, you know, to be able to then, you know, create the seamless uh, flow um, of an atmosphere. Um, so that is what we are trying to look at when we look at multi-channel logistic solutions. So moving from just one uh, mode of transportation, and we are already seeing progress and when we tell you, in some of the countries that, you know, implementation is currently taking place, including eight countries in Africa already, you know, Rwanda, Kenya, really exciting space, but also from a private sector point of view, because you can't really speak on infrastructure um, changes and investment if the private sector is not involved. Right? So we're also seeing the private sector being able to help them close this gap of infrastructure. 
Now, I'm keen to find out, uh, you know, about um, the, the, the supply side pressures that we might see here, um, Nomvo, that might actually cause um, some challenges. So Africa is a young uh, continent. We keep hearing about this youth dividend that's going to give, you know, up and coming educated yeah. Africans, middle class booming, access to credit and really are hungry for uh, products and services. And what we yeah. what, what we what we both probably see is very high demand, but supply side constraints here. So I'm mean, just keen to find out about you know trying to hack for uh, the, the supply side issues that might come, and how multi-channel logistics may also uh, be able to to assist in that regard. Hmm. Hmm. I think you mentioned a very uh, interesting uh, challenge, and yet it's also an opportunity mm. if you look at it because Africa as a whole has one of the youngest populations, you know, by 2030, it's estimated that it will be home to 32% of the world's youth. Sure. Right? And you said it, right, the youth comes with entrepreneurship, innovation, and all of these things. So even now at a business level, the whole idea, you know, with the boost in e-commerce is that people want to get, you know, their shipments on time, right? No delays and everything else like that. So then with already setting up a solution where you have multiple modes, you know, should there be a disruption in road infrastructure? Should there be a disruption in, you know, rail um, shipment, which we're not really getting that much, but should there be a disruption in any of these other forms of transportation? You know, customers can still be able to receive their shipments on, you know, uh, no, without delays. Right, so the, the whole, I think, benefit um, around multi-channel logistics is that it really reduces the time delays. Mm -hmm. It reduces, you know, the possible disruption that we could get, which we have been seeing. And it, it's really um, looking at where the continent is going. It, 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 it is, it's an exciting phase which can be implemented at a company level, but also overall at a government level. Now, the last two years have provided key uh, lessons to evade vulnerabilities in the supply chain arena, um, you know, and that's uh, post-COVID-19, but also looking at the likes of the Russia-Ukraine, where all of these, uh, you know, uh, very tricky things that happened and shocks that we didn't expect to impact supply chains. Talk to us about these vulnerabilities and the lessons to evade them, Nomvon. Mm, definitely, definitely. So maybe let's... Take it back to what I already mentioned. I'm not going to go into depth. The past that is that 2021 was one of the first ones looking at just you know 2020 up until 2022. 2021, this is kind of blockage, right? You know, where when we're focusing on just one way of doing things, that's where we're going to be affected. And it's not just um blockage for a few days, but then that was global chain that was supposed to go to many other places. So that affected that. But when you look at um the COVID-19 pandemic, again, because we were so reliant on exports and maybe imports, yeah, we're so reliant on products coming in from you know the European market, but now everybody has locked down, so you can't really ship things and also the manufacturing capacity within the country as well is rather low or in focus also mostly on the external uh, market so then 2020 also provided us an opportunity to see okay how can we then move away from just having a focus on the external markets but how can we boost local manufacturing capacity how can we boost our way of doing businesses to ensure that the customer is able to get their things on time right and that's when we had the whole boost of e-commerce mm -hmm. so that was a very interesting lesson um, and then we look at 2022, once again, Russia-Ukraine war, when we are very dependent on just the external markets and we're not able to get those goods and source those goods from our fellow, let's say, African um, um, and economies, then it puts us at a risk. And that's why I think the whole uh, AFCFTA is really uh, integral because it wants to even push manufacturing capacity within Africa uh, to benefit Africa. So um, quite a lot, and even 2022, uh, China, Mm -hmm. You know, disruptions at the, 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 the one of the biggest, I think, uh, terminals, you know, uh, ports, really that affected everybody trying to get their ships and, and goods from China. Mm -hmm. So really, um, it's, the logistics industry is very integrated, yeah. right? You affect one part, <laughs> many other blockages are going to happen, but when you really move away from just one solution and think of how else can we do business, that's when we can be able to really reap uh, where the continent is going to go in a few years. Well, Nova, thank you so much for your time and your insights this afternoon talking to us about multi-channel logistics. That was Nomvo Casolo, Africa consultant at Frost & Sullivan.